Hey, what's up guys? Vin here from VD Engineering and welcome to another video. This video will cover a lecture on MATLAB and Simulink and the aerospace block set. In my last video, I did make a tutorial on how to design an autopilot in MATLAB and Simulink. And a few videos before that, I actually had a lecture on the aerospace block set, this very powerful tool. This video will actually be based on that lecture and if you did not watch it, I highly recommend you do. This video will cover an example of the aerospace block set being used in an application to build a full flight simulation of an airplane in Simulink. Now, I did not make this myself. It is a MATLAB example, but I'll be explaining each step of the process and how they actually did it. And we can actually get to see how the aerospace block set tools are put into an application. So let's get started. Okay guys, so here we are in Simulink and MATLAB and I basically opened the example here. If you want to open this yourself, you go into the MATLAB window and type in ASBHL20 as I did here. And it should open all this by default. This is a built-in example, so I'm going to be explaining to you guys how it works. So the first thing we see here is that it is connected to flight gear. And I have a separate video on how to connect MATLAB and flight gear very easily. It shows you step by step and I recommend you watch it. I'll put a card up here if you want to see it. And it walks you through every step in detail. So I'm, I'm going to be focusing on the vehicle simulation itself. Um, here we have a bunch of commands for pilot signals and environment. Now this thing is very important because you need environment for your autopilot to respond. So if you have a wind gust or something, you can account for it. And to open environment blocks, you can go into your aerospace block set here and then look for environment. You have atmosphere, you know, space phenomena like, you know, jet streams and all that stuff, wind and gravity. So if we briefly look at this environment block, we have a bunch of atmospheric models here. So wind is based on how fast you're going, what your location is in space, like what latitude and longitude you're in, and also your attitude. So your yaw, pitch and roll angles are very important in determining what the relative wind velocity will be. The atmospheric model is simply your pressure, altitude and density, and you can see it over here. And this gravity model here is your gravitational force based on height, and it's the WGS-84. So WGS-84 stands for the Department of Defense Standard Earth Model, and this is used in almost all aerospace simulation applications. So going back into the pilot command now, we can see the pilot commands. So when the pilot flies an airplane, they simply set commands, right? So if they're flying it manually with, with the joystick, they set commands for the ailerons, the elevator, which controls like your your pitch, the rudder, which means your yaw, your speed setting, your brake, and your gear handle. So this is like landing gear up or down. Going into your RF signals, here you have a bunch of communication blocks, but I'm no expert in communication systems, so I'm not gonna go into it in much detail. And all these commands from your pilot, your RF signals, and your environment are being sent into the vehicle systems model. So this vehicle systems model is extremely important and I'm going to be looking into that now. So let's go into that and here you can see a bunch of subsystems. You have your communication, your avionics which is the flight control system, your FEDEC which stands for your digital engine control system and your landing gear control. So the simplest out of all these is your landing gear control. It's simply gear up or gear down based on how fast you're going and where your height is when you're landing. Your FEDEC is your engine control system. Your avionics looks at sensors, IMUs, GPS settings, and basically just uses that for a feedback control system. You have your avionics base model as a bunch of like communication which is the bus and your data as well, so your altitude and so on. Your altimeter is very important to, to know how fast you're going and your air data computer. So an air data computer looks at wind speed, you know, location and so on. It's found in almost all, all airplanes out there. And it's similar to your FMC, which stands for your Flight Management Computer, or FMS, which means Flight Management System. So now these, all these commands here from your avionics goes into the vehicle model. So the vehicle model is the most important, and it's the one I'm going to be focusing on for this video. So let's open that now. So here we are in the most important part of this video, which is the vehicle model. And this basically is your flight simulation is all in here. So this looks at a full flight simulation. And let's first look into the aerospace block set itself and let's see where you can get, get all this from. So equations of motion go into six degrees of freedom, which means that it's flying in space in yaw, pitch and roll. And it uses quaternions. 
And why do we use quarter units? Because we don't have a gimbal lock for all your angles. If I go into aerodynamics, so let's look at now the aerodynamics block. So aerodynamics is based on your actuator settings, your, your pitch angle, your lift and your drag. So this looks at a whole bunch of settings like your wind velocity, your body velocity, your air density, the atmospheric and so on. So if I go into my derived conditions here, this is based on what you're flying and where you're flying and your aircraft attitude. So based on your angles, your pitch angle and your speed, you can cal calculate a whole bunch of stuff. And for example, here Q bar stands for dynamic pressure, which is half your density velocity squared. And here you have a bunch of side slip. So side, side slip is simply when your plane is flying like, like this. So it's not going straight in, it's going like that a little bit. And it's based on your wind velocity. So, so these things are alpha, beta, V, they all go into your communication block. So this bus is your for your avionics system to re recognize where you're going and to calculate things based on that. Let's look at some actuation systems. So the airframe is super important. Now these are actuator commands. So when the plane flies in the atmosphere, you have a bunch of actuators, right? So for your brake system, your, your you know landing gear, your spoiler, your flaps, they're all actuated systems, which means that they're mechanical systems, which are commanded by an actuator from your avionics bay. And this basically looks at all that and it transforms from actual, actual control to aerodynamic control. Now keep in mind that in aviation, everything is represented by coefficients, right? Which is super annoying, but it's also very important. So based on your ailerons, elevators, rudders, so these are all your mechanically actuated systems, right? And they all go into position, so your angle. So all, all these things have a specific position and based on that position, you will compute your aerodynamic coefficients. That's what's done here. And based on that, it goes into this coefficient system here. Now this takes in your actuator settings, your alpha, beta angles, your pitch angle, and your, your, you know, your um, full velocity angle. PQR is your body rates, which means that how fast you're moving like this. If I, if I open that, you can look at a bunch of stuff here. So let's look at a, one, one of these, for example, your actuator increments. Now these things, now this thing is, I would say this is by far the most important thing when building a flight simulation, because whenever, let's say you move an elevator by like one degree, right? So if you, if you pitch up your elevator by one degree, it's going to change your coefficients and your lift and your drag. So this looks at your lookup tables and lookup table is simply done in a wind tunnel. What they do is they do a wind tunnel test and they see how the coefficient changes based on your velocity and then it's fed into a table here. So this looks at your speed and then computes your setting. It's all built in here, so I'm not going to open it. And this looks at your ailerons, elevators, rudders, flaps, and your differential flaps or your slats. Um, here you have a whole bunch of systems here. And if I open one of these, for example, it's basically, you can see how it's taken your X coefficient, your speed coefficient, and your ZZ, and then it's calculating your del coefficient. So del coefficient is your difference in angle. So let's say, for example, if I'm flying at some speed, let's say if I'm flying at 1000 kilometers per hour, straight and level with the ailerons at zero. The moment if I move the elevator up in this case, it's going to change my, my Z coefficient and your X coefficient, right? Because your elevator is moving in this axis. And that's going to add a little difference to your coefficient and that's calculated over here. And that gets fed back into your system here and this adds up everything and then calculates your CL, which is your lift coefficient. So what I'm saying here is that building a simulation of a full airplane is extremely complicated and it's all based on coefficients. And if you're taking an aerospace class, you will come across this very often. So the first thing you must always do when designing an airplane is to first do a lot of simulations and see how your airplane will respond to various conditions in flight. Going back into my datum coefficients, so this is alpha and beta. Now this just looks at your default conditions, so your CX, CY, and all these are lookup tables over here. So it is very important to you know understand how lookup tables actually work. If you want me to make a video on how to use a lookup table in Simulink, please leave it in the comments below and I will get to it. Okay, so, so these two are being added here into the sum block. And now let's look at your body rate damping. So damping is simply when you, let's look at a spring mass, right? So damping is when you have motion being restricted by something. It could be like, you know, drag or something in this case. And this is, this looks at your span. So your wingspan, your length and your span again. 
and this this does something similar it uses lookup tables to calculate your damping and then adds a del coefficient so del means delta which is the difference in something going into q and r you have the same thing here and it adds up everything and divides it by your speed to calculate your cl now cl is a function of velocity and that is why it needs the, the non-dimensionalized version of it and that is why you're dividing it by your velocity here Ground, you also have effects so when your plane is taxiing it might experience some drag or some lift so in aerospace engineering aerodynamics is represented most likely by forces and moments because that is how you can actually compute the motion of an object right if you guys must have taken dynamics class you, you have your free body diagram and that is what's being done here so let's if you if i look into this it's just simply taking your CG, so your center of gravity, center of pressure, your Q bar, which is your dynamic pressure, and your body coefficient. So this is taking all this and then calculating forces and moments based on that. And that goes into your force and moment here. It is much, it is super important to represent aerody aerodynamics by axis because your your plane, when your plane is flying, the autopilot simply knows what you're doing, right? So it has to be able to find your speed and your setting based on your moments and your forces being exerted on the plane like that's all you know so you can't just simply you know put in random values and use it you must somehow bring in all these values and they make it represented by an axis which is super important and that is what's being exactly done over here so you have your aerodynamics your propulsion so propulsion is simply based on the propulsion system you have in this case, it is a simple jet engine, so you, you can see commands here, your forces in X, Y, Z, and your element is your moment rates, and it's being fed into here. So propulsion will be based on example, right? So like, if you have a rocket, it'll be something different. It'll be your nozzle force. If you have a scramjet or, or like a hypersonic airplane, it'll be your scramjet propulsion system, which is based on, you know, shock reflection and th things like that. And so that's basically this, and your landing gear is also being fed into here. So if I look at landing gear in brief, it's not too significant because in most cases, the simulations are done with no landing gear extended. Okay, so now this is the most important thing. And this block simply takes in your forces and moments and calculates everything you need to know. So it calculates, if I look into this one by one, that's your velocity in your earth centered, earth fixed, which is ECEF frame. Your X is your position in your ECEF frame, which is X, Y, and Z. Your mu and your H is your, I believe it's latitude and longitude in this case. Your phi, theta, and psi is your yaw, pitch, and roll angles, your Euler angles. But in this case, it's being converted into a quaternion because you're using, you're trying to avoid the gimbal lock. Your DCM stands for your directional cosine matrix. Your VB is your body velocity, which is detected by the accelerometer. Your omega relative is your angular velocity relative to, you know, the base. Your d omega b over dt is simply your body rates. It's simply how your body is accelerating, your airplane body is accelerating in respect to itself. So, like, it's basically taking a differential, which is calculating acceleration from velocity. And your ab is your body acceleration. You, you don't need every single thing. In this case, it is not using your DCM in your EF, which is your earth fixed frame and your body acceleration, it's just using the other stuff. And it feeds it to your plant. So plant is simply your plant. If you look at a control system, it's simply a controller and a plant and it's being fed back into your controller. So plant is sim simply your airplane, if you think about it. If I go back in here now, we can finally end it. So flight centers is being fed back into your plant area. So this here is your control system design. These are all your controllers here and your plant is basically this your airplane plant and the commands from your airplane are being sent back into your sensors. This is your filtering, your estimation. So it could be a common filter, it could be you know something else. And it's being fed back into your feedback loop. So this is your feedback control system. And by looking at this, you can tell it's an autopilot because it's not being commanded manually because it is a closed loop system, right? And this is being fed, fed into flight gear. If you want to look at the video, it might lag a little bit, so I'm not going to actually run the simulation here, but I'll post a link below where you can see it. And so yeah, so that's it for my video guys, thank you for watching a quick lecture on the aerospace blocks and how it is used in an example. Um, if you have any questions, you know, please let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care, have a nice day, bye-bye.